match referee Bernie White gets things underway. And incidentally, I had a chance to talk to Tim Mack about Bernie White and that familiarity, and he tells me that they're good mates, so that's what that's all about. Well, they've met each other many times in the course of the events staged on this single lane arena. These two have met once before as well, Castillo and Torgerson. Castillo coming out a big winner and starting off here with a strike. And I think it was Castillo's 245-194 win over Torgerson earlier in the tournament that A, told Castillo he can compete at this level and B, gave us the first indication that all was not well with the Torgerson game. Yes, yeah, sir. Because of that, this uh, match has uh, extra importance. Torgerson never likes getting beaten by somebody, and uh, I know he wants to come back and get his revenge here. And a 51 pin walloping as well, it was. Now, is this another ball change for Torgerson? Or is he sticking with the one that we saw earlier? No, he's changed balls again. Yeah, he has. Well, a different ball for the Baker. He goes back. Comes in with another one, but he gets the strike. But this is interesting, Richard. Yes, it was a little bit unexpected. I thought the other ball looked quite good in the Baker and was expecting him to start with it, but... Uh, he's done the business there with that one, so uh, good decision from Tora. At least so far, anyway. Of course, still another nine frames to go, so... Can't read too much into that just yet. So a strike for each of them. Dino looking to keep that string going. And doing so effectively. He looks so solid now, Castillo. The man about whom there were some questions when this Weber Cup started. Well, those questions were long ago answered. Dino really is throwing the ball very well. Great drive into the pocket there. So, Torgerson on that ball. Here he goes. There it is. It's not the one he used in that Baker, where he bowled a couple of strikes. That's the one we expected to see, but he's gone back to this ball, I think, Richard. Or is it a, th a third ball that he's using? I think it might be a third ball, you know. Oh dear, oh dear. Well, like I said, we can't make a judgement over the first strike that Torgerson threw, and... Obviously, he's still struggling, regardless of which ball he's throwing. Well, he's going to use that same ball again for the spare. <laughs> Safely done. But an early wobble once again for the Norwegian. Okay, so Dino steps up. He's already got a 10 pin advantage. Double working for him. And just brimming with confidence. He seems to step up every time expecting a strike. And more often than not, Looks that's good. exactly what he gets. here, feeding the ball out to round about the five board and then bringing it back to the pocket really strongly, just destroying the pins. Uh, fantastic stuff. Torgerson needs to get himself back on track. That's the way to do it. Well, this is two really good strikes and a spare from Torgerson, so that seven count he had in the second frame looks like it may well just have been a bad shot. It might well be that there is nothing wrong with the ball. The ball's doing what he needs it to do, but he just didn't put it in the right place last time.
So can Dino extend his lead to 30 pins? Looks good again. There's just no stopping him, is there? No stopping this man at all. Well, it, it's usually Torgerson that's heading, setting the hot pace and breaking his opponent. But the boot is on the other foot here. It's Torgerson desperately trying to hang on to the coattails of Castillo. With the knowledge that he lost by 51 pins the last time the two met. Well, Dino's already got half of that in only four frames. Unless Torgerson can respond with a strike. And he can't because the 10 pin was having nothing to do with it and sometimes you just don't get the breaks you deserve. Well, that's a good shot from Tora. He's very frustrated with the result. And he has every right to be. Didn't really see a lot wrong with that shot other than the fact that it left the 10 standing. Continues to slip further and further off the pace as Castillo just operates at a very high level indeed. Strike spare, strike spare from Torgerson. Normally you'd be pretty happy with that, but not against an opponent that's racked up a four bagger already and frankly looks capable of an awful lot more. I think he's there again, Nick. Oh, just a bit light. You jinxed him. I have just thrown this a little bit faster. Ball seem to get out to the right part of the lane for Dino. Not quite enough for the head pin. Leaves the two standing. The big kick up in the air. But he can't kick that pin down. I'm not sure he can knock it down with that little gimmick ball of his and he does but a chance for Torgerson to sneak his way back into this that's a good score from Dino Castillo well Torgerson will be really happy that the string has come to an end now so if he starts one of his own here he feels he can get back into it just offering a little bit of encouragement to him that Dino can't extend his lead with the next frame Hasn't got a strike working. So. Torgerson doing exactly the same as Dino did. Just sliding by a little bit. Not getting the ball to finish strong enough. So he remains 30 pins adrift. That's assuming he makes the spare. So 30 pins in it at the half halfway point. It's going to take a lot to rattle this young man's confidence. I always call him young because he's the rookie on the team, but he's in fact 30 years old. Oh, oh he got a break there, you know. He yeah. didn't deserve that. He could have been much worse off. Slide by the head pin too much again here. Not got enough of the head pin and could have left a 2 4 5, which is a nasty choppable spare, but gets a 4 pin to fall onto the 2 there. Just leaving a very, very easy 5 pin to spare. Safely disposed of. So. A second spare frame. Now, if only Torgerson can find this strike zone, which has been eluding him so far, there's still time for Torgerson to get right back into this. Here's a chance to take 10 pins back with one ball. 
but he had an opportunity last time. He couldn't take it. Here is chance number two. And there's a bit of rolling and pin action, but not enough. Fortune is not smiling on Tora Torgerson. No, this rolling pin was looking way too lazy to knock the 10 over. And if it's going to hit it, it needs to hit it on the fatter part of the pin. It might just have gone then. You saw really just the face of the pin catching the 10 and never really looked like it was going to knock it down. But he's made the spare. He's hanging in there. But he really needs to start something going soon. Yes, two chances. Both of them gone. Castillo, 30 pins up. Going into frame seven, a strike here, and the American would be hard to catch. I think Dino needs to make an adjustment here. He's just been coming up light on the headpin the last two shots. Well, I think he heard you. It may well be that the. Uh, Oil on the lane was carrying down towards the pins and just making the ball go a little bit longer. Yes. And he just moved his feet a fraction to the right or just slowed the ball down a little bit. Enabling him to get back to a good pocket hit. Now Torgerson has switched balls again to the one we thought he might be starting with anyway. as he tries to find the strike zone and he absolutely has to have this one. Well, he changes his ball and he gets a strike and I wonder if this is a ball change too late. Well, it's not too late yet. He's uh, got the strike there. He's got to hope that Dino doesn't start making a string of his own. This ball's obviously a lot more aggressive than the other one. It's hooked right over to the Brooklyn pocket and got very lucky, but... Sometimes you need a break to get back into things and... That's ironic, isn't it? You bowl two good balls and get the ten standing up. You bowl a Brooklyn and get the lot down. It's a funny game, this. Torgerson's not seeing the funny side of it at the moment, though. A double for Castillo. And he knows. He absolutely knows he's got this lane licked. has done really well to come back from those two nine spares. He's found a double again. Back in the pocket. He could easily strike out for 260 now. Well, what can Torgerson do? He has to hope that his opponent will let him in. has to strike here to remain 30 pins adrift. Well, obviously Torgerson not liking how much that previous ball hooked, so he's gone back to the one he was using. Still there, the still there. But needs Castillo to make a mistake or get a bad break. Yeah, it's an indication of how much Torgerson is struggling that these, he's making these ball changes. Well, he changed, um, he changed to the black and yellow ball because the other ball wasn't carrying 10 pins when he was hitting the pocket. Hoping that that one would carry, but he didn't like the ball reaction. It obviously reacted way too much for him. So he's been forced to go back to that ball, but he made it work on that shot. Well, Castillo frame nine that really would have locked it up if he'd got a strike there and he just did not get the ten just didn't get the break but that should keep him comfortably in control well Dino's currently running round a 238 pace and Torgerson can make that if he strikes out. So the match isn't dead. But it's getting close to that point. 
the spare from Castillo gives Torgerson just the faintest glimmer of an opportunity. But remember, earlier in this match, he had two chances, was unable to take either of them. Chance number three has got to be taken, and it is. Well, has that huge bit of luck getting the Brooklyn with that ball change helped him? Sometimes, as I said, that's just what you need. You start to feel that things are going your way again, and can he just make a good shot? And he's made two, so he's now got a turkey. Obviously, though, if Castillo strikes out from here, it is game over. Going into frame 10, the American exactly where he wants it. Working a spare, anything but a split here, and you would think the American is going to be home free. I don't think he's going to let this slip away, Richard. Well, he needs the next one to be safe. If he doesn't, if he gets the spares, 237, Torgerson can strike out for 238. So, the next strike is a shutout. Anything less, Torgerson can still win. As Tim said, these are the money frames. Is this one on the money? No. He was lucky to get away with the sleeper as well. The sleeper knocked down. Not quite over. He knows it. He knows that was important. He's just left a glimmer of hope oh. for Torgerson. Now then. Well, that makes life even easier for Tor now. He doesn't need to strike out. He can go strike, strike nine and win by pin now, so. 236. But will it be enough? He will be kicking himself if he loses this. And how badly do Europe need it? Well, he's got three in a row. Another three from Tora Torgerson. And this Weber Cup is very much alive. Has to have this one. No. Just won't go for Tora Torgerson today. Very angry with himself. He's just made two really good shots. He must have fancied himself to make another, but... This one's come up too heavy. He nearly fluked to strike by getting the six to take the four out. You'll see the six going over and just slightly in front of the four. Yeah, he knows. He knows that's the moment. Once again, frustration for Team Europe. Dino Castillo opening up with a four-bagger. And that gave him the cushion that he needed to complete a double over the Norwegian. It's 236 plays 2-1-3 in favour of the United States. They now lead the Weber Cup 16-11. Just two more points and the Cup will be theirs.